Hi there, I'm Suzette Kroll, Registered Dietitian. I'm your personal nutrition guide. This month we're going to focus on protein. If you haven't already heard, there is a strong emphasis on eating protein after weight loss surgery. This is to help your body heal and to minimize muscle loss and hair loss. Some of the healthy eating habits you've already started to establish, like eating more vegetables and eating more fruit and eating small amounts of healthy carbohydrate, will have to take a back burner to the protein after your surgery for a while. Protein is going to be front and center. You will be on a high protein diet throughout the recovery after your surgery and throughout the rapid weight loss period, which we call the honeymoon period. And this could last a good year, give or take. So this month, your nutrition goals are going to be to learn what foods have protein and to start eating protein with most meals so that you're in the habit of it. Where's the beef may come to mind, like the old Wendy's commercial from the 80s, uh, when you hear the word protein. But beef is not the only source of protein. All of these foods are high protein too. So chicken and turkey, pork and lamb, fish and shellfish, dairy products including yogurt, cheese, cottage cheese and ricotta, eggs, egg whites and egg beaters, beans, peas and lentils, tofu, tempeh, TVP and seton, almond cheese, nuts and seeds, jerky, and even deli meat like chicken, lean ham, and roast beef are good protein. Now, we want to have some kind of calorie awareness here. We don't just want to eat any food because it has protein, just because it has protein. We want as much protein as we can get for as few calories as we can get. So, we want to choose leaner cuts of meat, like the loin, sirloin, tenderloin, and round. The best, leanest choices in poultry are the white meat, no skin, and when you choose ground beef or ground chicken or ground turkey, use the fat percentages in the 90s, not in the 80s. And if budget allows, choose organic, free-range, and grass-fed beef and poultry. Now here's what I mean about the fat percentages. You want to choose the 90s, like 93.7 or 90.10, versus the 80.20 or the 85.15, if budget allows. And here's why. A closer look at this, you can see the protein count here is 19, and we're spending 220 calories for that. A quick rule of thumb is to multiply the protein by 10 and make sure the calories don't exceed that number. So in this case, protein times 10 is 190. Our calories are a little high here. You can see a big difference with the 90-10. So here we have 20 protein and 160 calories. So now our math is 20 times 10, protein times 10, 200. Our calories are much lower. So you can see the 90-10 ground turkey is much leaner than that 85-15. Here's an example of sausage and why you shouldn't just pick anything just because it has protein. Here you would get 14 grams of protein, but spend 260 calories for it. So that's quite a bit. Uh, let's see, I'm sorry, 14 times 10 is 140. So the calories are way higher here, 260. And this is chicken breast tenders. This is a great example of a very lean protein. Here we're getting 26 protein. We're spending 120 calories only on it. So 26 times 10 is 260. And our calories are even half that much. So this is a great lean protein. How you cook your protein matters. Trim off as much fat as you can before cooking. Pour off as much fat after cooking. Use low fat cooking methods like steaming and grilling, poaching, baking, and broiling. Don't saute in oil and certainly don't batter and deep fry and don't smother your protein with any kind of cream sauce or cheese sauce. All of this applies whether you're cooking at home or eating out. So no fried chicken as protein, only grilled chicken or baked chicken. If you've always heard fish is healthy and you should eat more of it, this is the month to start doing so if you're not already. You can use online resource, resources like youtube.com and pinterest.com to get good recipes and learn how to cook fish. You can use search terms like how to cook fish or how to cook fish and parchment to get really good recipes. If you don't cook fish at dinner because nobody else in your home likes to eat fish, then consider eating fish at lunchtime 
when you're not eating with other family members. These star kissed tuna creations are a great place to start. They're tuna or salmon. They're already seasoned. They're really easy. Or you could make your own tuna salad or salmon salad from scratch and maybe use plain Greek yogurt in place of mayonnaise. The Greek yogurt's great protein, so you'd get a double dose that way. Dairy products are good protein sources, but they can have a lot of fat, which makes them higher calorie too. So if you use dairy products for protein, choose the non-fat varieties or low fat, reduced fat. Sometimes these are labeled 0% or 2%. Beans are great sources of protein too. And in this month, I want you to actually start eating beans. Eat them more often as your protein. Start with a small goal, maybe eating them once a week, work up to a few times a week, and ultimately start eating beans daily. MeatlessMonday.com and our Tucson Bariatric Pinterest are great online resources to get recipes. Now the jokes about gassy beans are just as common as the experience. If you're worried about beans being the musical fruit, just know that your body will adjust. Begin eating beans maybe at home before you eat them away from home. Gradually increase them over several weeks. Start with mung beans or adzuki beans or lentils. These are a little less gassy. Use digestive spices like ginger or turmeric and chew your beans. Chew your food. Digestion starts in your mouth. Nuts and seeds and nut butters also have protein, but they also have a lot of fat, so be careful. Nuts like almonds, walnuts, cashews, pecans, and peanuts. Seeds like sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. And nut butters like peanut butter, almond butter, and sunflower seed butter. So again, they have more fat than protein, so you maybe want to limit them to once or twice a day and use a serving size of an ounce or a quarter cup as a guideline. It's smart to keep a measuring cup in the bag so that you're not just grabbing them or free pouring them. And you can use two tablespoons as a guide for measuring the nut butters. So this month we're focusing on protein. Eat protein at most meals. Choose lean animal protein. Make an effort to choose beans and lentils and peas more often as your protein. And choose nuts and seeds and nut butters as proteins, but try to limit them. Your meals should all be small amounts of protein and a large amount of vegetables. So here's what it might look like every meal. For breakfast, you could have scrambled egg omelets and load them up with peppers, onions, and tomatoes. This is in keeping with your goal to eat more vegetables. Or you could have plain, non-fat Greek yogurt and stir in a lot of berries. This is in keeping with your goal to eat more fruit. At lunch, you could have chicken or salmon or tuna pouch over a large green salad. Even throw in some orange slices. This way you get your fruit and your vegetables and your protein all in one meal. At dinner, you might try a new lentil soup recipe or you could stir fry vegetables and add chicken or shrimp for your protein. You get the idea. If you need further help with this month's nutrition goal, please feel free to schedule an appointment with me. I'm Suzette Kroll, registered dietitian. I'm here to be your personal nutrition guide. Have a great month and we'll see you next time.